Welcome to the Mommy Helper Show. On today's show, pop open that perfect bottle of wine. Soupy Wines founder, Sam Badia, took us to one of the hottest Indian restaurants in New York City, Tulsi. He shows us how to pair traditional Indian meals with the right type of wine. Next, we continue our conversation with special education teacher, Lori Lombardi. This week, she gives us information on how technology, like iPads, can add to your child's ADD. Also, are you or your spouse a little ADD? Learn how to recognize symptoms of attention deficit disorder in adults. So kick back, relax, and get comfortable because the next 30 minutes is all about you. Hey mom, if you're like me, you go home and the first thing you think about is popping open a great bottle of wine. But that doesn't necessarily mean it goes with the Indian meal of the night. Today we're sitting with Sam Bhatia. He's the president and owner of Sufi Wine. Sam, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. And the one thing I love about your wine is it is made for Indian food. Now, from what I understand, they're French grapes. But why did you use French grapes for Indian food? Well, in history, France is known for a wine. The, the land in France, the, the climate, it, the soil, it all brings out the best grapes. With good grapes, you get good wine. And the French are renowned for having some of the best wines in the world. So we wanted to make something that stands out, a great product that actually does justice to the culinary journey you're about to embark on. So how can you take French grapes and make them into wine that is good for Indian food? It's all about blending it. We have three wines. Uh, we have a red blend, which is our signature wine. Mm -hmm. And this is blended uh, to go with Indian food. We have a white, which is a Vione, excellent with Indian food or any spicy food. And we just launched the rosé, which you'll try shortly also. And this is just great. It's a, uh, you're sitting on a deck, you're on the beach, anywhere. It's a great wine, goes great with any kind of cuisine. Wow. So. Okay, so talk to me about, I am sitting down, I'm gonna have my bhil. And I, what kind of wine goes with bhil? I would say the Vionnet. Why? And it's the white? Yes, Vionnet is a white wine. Um, it's just the right amount. When you try it with the bhil, you'll see the flavors coming alive. It's like hints of ginger, apples, and it'll bring out all the flavor. Bale itself with the condiments that Chef Heyman Matur uses here at Tulsi is all about, you got your coriander, you got your uh, yogurt, uh, the tamarind sauce, and on top of that you have a little bit of cilantro. So when you mix all that up, you know, it's all about bringing out the flavors, not overpowering them. So when you have it with the white wine, you'll truly experience the food and the wine. Instead of overpowering, mm -hmm. the wine will actually bring out all the flavors. All right, let's try it. Go for it. I don't know if I believe you. I'm going to have to taste test. All right, here we go. We got a little bit of bhil. Mmm, that's delicious. And you swig of wine. That is good. And it's refreshing. Yes, you have the spice of the bhil, but it's refreshing with the white wine. Yeah, normally, you know, uh, when you go for Indian food or any kind of spicy food, you know, people try to go with uh, beer to chase down yes, the heat. Yes, exactly. That's, that works, but you're killing all the flavors. Okay. And in order for you to actually enjoy the food without killing the flavors, because all you're doing is killing the heat. And when you kill the heat, it kills everything else with it. Sure. Our idea was when you're eating any kind of meal, it doesn't matter it's Indian, uh, Chinese, Thai, anything South Asian uh, per se, or even Mexican for that. The whole idea is to bring out that culinary journey. Enjoy the food with the right blends and the right wines. And when you sit and enjoy it, right now we're at Tulsi enjoying Chef Matur's food. And each item, you know, it takes a lot of pride in creating it. Sure. And when you pair it with the right wines, you're, you're out there you're actually 
enjoying the flavors as they come alive, you know? It's great. It's great. With each dish. Okay, so I'm at I'm not in a restaurant, let's say I'm home, and I just made my favorite cauliflower sabzi. What goes with sabzi? I mean, it's a vegetarian dish. I would usually just drink anything I have in my hand. No? What should go with this? I would suggest either or. Uh, I prefer, I'm a red wine drinker, that's my drink. Sure. I would suggest you try it with the red. Okay. Now, and here's the thing. My sabzis are usually spicy. Isn't red wine also very bold and, and full of flavor? I mean, am I just canceling one flavor for the other? No. Um, the great thing about our red wine is it's it created great. It's created by Freddy Cougo mm -hmm. from, the Acad uh, from the Academy of Wine mm -hmm. in France. He's our master blender. Mm -hmm. uh, we worked with him over a two-year period trying to create the right blend. We, we tasted about a hundred different blends until we got the formula right where right. it actually complemented food. Then we did the taste testing with our friends, family, and other people in the trade trying to see which one they preferred. Mm -hmm. And it was like a blind taste test. Once we did that, this was one of the two wines that it kind of narrowed the blend. Mm -hmm. And that's how Mirza Ghalib was born. Let's see. Now, why the name Mirza? Well, Mirza Ghalib uh, is a poet. Mm -hmm. And he wrote his poetry, all his mm. poetry about wine. Mm -hmm. And it's like an homage to the poet. We wanted to... Delicious. Like great wine, we wanted to give it kind of a character, uh, appeal that's mm -hmm. separate from, you know, kind of separates us from the crowd. And this is a way to keep his dream and his fondness of wine and poetry alive. And the fact that the subzi, the spices of the subzi fill your mouth, and then this complements the spice on top of it. It's really a great pairing. Yeah, it, it goes perfect. Now, try, I would suggest you try that with the uh, white wine also. Oh, okay. That's a good idea. So just you can, you, you can, refreshment. yeah. I mean, it's, sometimes it's just preference. Certain foods go right. with, you know, every kind of food. Mm. Well, this is great food. I prefer the red. I prefer the red, but this is quite refreshing. This is really good. Okay, what do we do? Dal is a staple in most of our diets being Indian, um, I would never think to have dal with any kind of alcoholic beverage. Now why should we have dal with wine? It's not necessary that you have it wine, but if you try the dal, this is dal makhani, mm -hmm. which is uh, Chef Mathur's signature dal. Uh, it has a nice creamy sauce and it'll go fantastic. You know, you could have it with a uh, tandoori roti, garlic naan, right. or onion kulcha. It's totally up to your preference. And when you have this with just a little bit of rice or mm -hmm. roti, and you can sip the wine. Uh, you can actually taste how, what kind of difference. It smells great. Yeah, the flavors, you know, you can see the flavors coming alive. So and what do we go with with this, red, white, or rosé? Definitely the red. Definitely the red? Definitely All the right, red. All right, here we go. Mm. It's a nice combination. It actually goes well together. I get a different taste in my mouth when you have the yeah, dal it, it, and the red go together. It's really yummy. It actually gives you a chance to actually bring out, you know, normally with dal, you know, it's our staple food. Yeah. Uh, in Indian cuisine. Like, there's, it's a comfort food. Yeah. And, you know, as Indians all over the world now are, you know, we're a global community. Right. And wine has become a part of your meal. Right. You know, like when you're having, you're at home, you want to have, enjoy a glass of wine, just relax. Well, hey, as a mother, I think wine is just part of the deal when you become a mom. Right, mom? So, <laughs> as long as you're a mom, you need to have wine in your life, but it's good to know that you can have it paired with great Indian food. Yeah, and you know, there's those days where you just want to have a glass. You could even have it, you know, or just- Or a bottle. Or a bottle, <laughs> <laughs> depending on how the kids behave. <laughs> exactly. All right, let's move on to this. This is spinach. Yes. Spinach malai kofta. Yes. And, oh my gosh. Now, a lot of this food looks fattening. Do you think the wine adds more calories or takes it away? No, I don't, th you know, uh, I defer to the French. Okay. Uh, smaller portions. Uh-huh. And uh, it all depends with ingredients. And here at Tulsi, you know, everything's fresh. Yeah. You're not having food that has a lot of preservatives or, mm. 
um, how should I say, um, you know, it's foods not that, killed. Yeah. It's not and, leftover food. Yeah, it's made fresh, mm -hmm. and you know the, the portions are small. It's and all food uh, that's served here is for sharing. So, as long as you control your portions, and uh, you know, if you're in France, uh, you know, I've never seen any uh, people over there. They drink wine day with and night with, every, with everything. Right. So, and, what goes uh, with spinach? Tell me. Spinach, I would definitely do the red also. You do the red again with the spinach, yeah. okay? Yeah, because well, it's it has a tomato. Uh -huh. uh, the sauce. Right. If it was just spinach, I would say go with the Vionnet, the okay. white wine. Uh, but I would do the red since it has a nice tomato gravy because it'll bring out all the flavors of the gravy. Mm. Right, just mm hmm I might not stop. You just keep talking, I'll keep go eating. Go ahead. <laughs> you should eat. See, what happens is spinach, you know, um, is made, then the chef makes it, and then it's blended. Then the sauce, which is uh, the chef's signature recipe, the creaminess, all the spicy flavors, you know, all the spices when they come together, that's when the wine kind of kicks in. Yeah. So you got something that's made with a lot of different spices to bring out, you know, you're already on a journey. Right. And you want to enhance your experience. And if you're going out for dinner, uh, or even at home, just relaxing and the wine goes perfect. Right. And it's a nice wine that you can just sip, enjoy. When we come back, Sam tells us how to pair your favorite non-vegetarian Indian dishes with the perfect glass of wine. Stick around. Hey mom, did you miss the latest episodes of the Mommy Helper Show on Crossings TV? Or maybe you don't get the network yet. Have no fear, the Mommy Helper app is here. The Mommy Helper app is your therapy session on the go. Get latest episodes, get motivated every day, even find out where you can go to get pampered in your neighborhood. Download the Mommy Helper app and have it with you all the time. So you have the show, you have the app, make sure you like us on Facebook, and you'll always be in the know with the Mommy Helper show. Welcome back. So now you kind of have an idea on how to select the perfect bottle of wine with a vegetarian meal. But what if you're a meat eater? Sam talks about pairing the right wine with your carnivorous meal and how to pick the perfect vintage. So far, everything is fantastic, but everything is vegetarian. Now, the same rules apply for Indian fish and chicken and mutton. If I'm sitting at home and having my, my favorite fish that's made maybe in Methi, um, which wine would I go? Would it be well, the it white? Depend, it depends. If you're doing fish, it depends what kind of condiments or spices you're using on it. Right. If it's just fish grilled with a little lemon mm -hmm. or black pepper or something, mm -hmm. once you use any kind of spice on fish, lamb, goat, chicken, I would go with the red. Okay. Um, fish normally, if it's just simple, mm -hmm. it's just filleted, little, very little, you know, no spices, just grilled fish with a little lemon juice, I would say go with the white, white wine. White wine. Yeah. Okay. Because it goes perfect. Does seasons matter? I mean, winter versus summer versus spring versus it's fall? It's just preference. You know, okay. India India being a hot climate, yes. people still drink red wine throughout the year. In New York, we have four seasons, as you know. Right, uh, right now, we're going through a brutal winter and, uh, you know, it's super cold. But as spring comes along, you know, our new rosé vintage comes out again. We'll have the 2013 rosé in. But New Yorkers like wine with their meal. It doesn't right. matter it's summer, spring. Sure. Um, and, you know, wine's a part of the culture. Right. You know? It really uh, doesn't is. matter you're Indian, non-Indian. Wine is all about wine is sharing always with friends fine. and family. Wine is always fine at every yeah. meal, every time. Yeah, it's all about sharing, you know. And we believe, you know, uh, Wine just brings people together, and that's that's our motto, you know. So tell me this: um, you mentioned your 2013s or 2014s. I always get very confused. The older the wine, the better the wine. Not necessarily. Okay. Um, our wine is young. You know, it's only aged for about a month. Well, your company is young. How old is your company? It's only been eight months. So you have uh, a baby in officially itself. Officially launched since our official launch. So it's your baby, and uh, it's growing, and the wine is young, but the the flavor is still old? Is it still old in your mouth? Yeah, I mean, the uh, the juice that goes into the, or the actual wine. Um, you know, this is a 2011, mm -hmm. we're in 2014. Right. So this was actually bottled in 2010. Uh -huh. So the planning and the preparation starts early on. So Got right it. now, 
we're working on 2015, 20, like the, the grapes are already there. The juice I see, is already there. I see, got it. They're either in barrels or they're in containers, you know, got with it. the modern technology. Then they normally sit in barrels. They're young wines. You can drink this, you know, let it breathe for about half an hour. Okay, so uh, the breathing process is important. Yeah, I mean, it depends. Okay. If you let it just open up a little or decant it, uh, it even tastes better. Got it. But like 15, 20 minutes, I wouldn't say 30 minutes, 15 minutes, let okay. it breathe a little. It's fantastic. And is that for red and white? White doesn't need. Doesn't white. need any yeah, breathing. Like, okay. Uh, the, it's normally the red that needs decanting. White's uh, drinkable, you know, the grapes, very easy, you okay. know, it's just like a, red is the one that kind of. You've got to made very simple, no, you know, if I go shopping now for wine, I know I'm looking at a certain wine, I'm looking at a certain grape, and if it's young, doesn't that's what I mean, it's bad, right? Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't suggest like, you know, it's 2014, and if the label says 2014, I would wait a year to You'd drink it. You'd wait a year, okay. Yeah. Uh, normally, you know, people look at the date and, you know, go, oh my God, it was just bottled. No, that's not the case. Uh, the vintage, normally, it depends on the winemaker, but normally it's a process because the, the grapes are harvested at a certain time. Mm -hmm. Normally, you know, August, September, depending on the uh, weather, climate, uh -huh. and, you know, when they decide it's the right time to take the grapes out. Okay. And then once the grapes are harvested, you know, then you go through the whole process and then it goes to the vineyard. From there it goes to the bottling company. You know, it's like a whole process. It's a process, correct. Yeah. So let's get back to the food. Now, uh, we have some delicious lamb chops and let me tell you, Tulsi is known for these mouth-watering lamb chops. I would just naturally pick a red, but can you do a white with the lamb chop? You could, but like I was telling you earlier, you know, lamb chops, the way Chef Matur makes the lamb chops, you know, it's the spices. Indian food and with the Michelin star and award-winning chef, all the spices are gonna come alive. Right. You wanna enjoy your lamb chops. At the end of the day, it's preference, but right. if I had the choice, I would go with the red, because just because of the spices. Got it. Um, but, you know, you can have it with anything, either the white or the red. Sure. Uh, it's just a matter of preference at the end of the day, you know, but I, based on the flavors, the red would go air better. Fair enough. Well, there you have it, ladies. Next time you've kicked back and started watching your favorite show on TV, you just don't know what to have with dinner, choose Soupy Wines. Last week, special education teacher Lori Lombardi taught us how to identify symptoms of attention deficit disorder in our kids. This week, she helps us identify them in ourselves and in our partner. Also, she talks about technology and how it can contribute to symptoms of ADD in your children. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about, you know, there is some research that says that uh, gadgets and, and iPods and, and telephones and all these things that we give our kids to silence them down, especially when we're out of the house, can sometimes lead to ADD. What are your thoughts about that? Well, I do have, um, we talk about this in our house because I have some people who love to be in front of that computer. <laughs> and we know that the certain parts of the computer, I mean, it's been scientifically proved that it really activates the frontal lobe of the brain. Okay. And so it, it kind of kicks off a little bit more of that impulsivity center. So definitely I would limit the time in front of the computer and the iPad. Although the iPad can also be an excellent tool for learning for children also that I always use, uh, I use a lot in the classroom. Um, for rewards going on the computer or using the iPad or sometimes if a child can't learn in a certain way there are certain programs that they will learn through the iPad right and when I can't always read a book out loud to my child I can have it read out loud on the iPad I can ask questions back then so I do use those things often with, right. with, with children got it got it so you 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 know you bring up a great point about not using the iPad and iPhones and and putting these things in front of our children that could really set off an excitement mode in their mind. And I think that, again, that's great advice for any child. But as we move in, in the world and technology gets that much faster and faster and faster, what are your thoughts about being a little ADD on purpose? Because to keep up with the technology and keep up with the demands of our lives, to multitask and every job we go to, we have to put several different hats on. I mean, uh, by diminishing all 
of the child's ability to multitask or that excitement mode, will it hurt them in the future? I don't believe so. Um, again, it's gradual and with moderation as you start, as you find out what the frustration level really is for your child, as you ob observing the child and what the child is, is doing in your home. And you can kind of tell, all right, now he is ready to do this. And once he's handled that level, okay, now he can go to the next level and he can try a little bit more. We can right. do more on the computer and now we'll try this game. Sometimes we try things and even seeing a different movie and we'll find out, okay, that was disaster. He had nightmares for that for a week or it really set him off. He wasn't able to key down that night. Right. Then I know what kind of television he should be watching or what kind of movies or what situations he should be in. And as the child is growing, you definitely want him to be able to have more and more experiences. Um, as he's getting some new experiences, it's not a bad idea to do some role model and playing in, in your home. Sure. To go, we're going to, we're going to, in this situation, let's role play what things might happen as you go to this party. And there's a lot of different children there that you don't know. What are some things that you can do? Let's role play that. Let's act that out. Right. And then certain situations can come out and you can talk with the child about how we can best handle that situation. Where you don't want to blurt out an answer. Where you don't want to um, do something that wouldn't be um, acceptable in that kind of party situation with what's, with what's going on. So a lot of moderation is yes. what I'm hearing is a yes. theme, which is really great. Mm -hmm. um, how do, I know when you get diagnosed with ADD, a lot of doctors will prescribe medication. Are there alternatives that a parent can look into above and beyond medication or just somebody who chooses they don't want to medicate their child? Mm -hmm. How, are there holistic approaches to solving ADD? There certainly are. There certainly are a lot of different um, methods that are out there and different programs that can be tried. And again, as a parent, you have to kind of just find what is right for your child. Um, there are many different medications now, um, whereas years um, in the past there was not. There was very limited. Now there's many different kind of educa uh, medications. There's a lot of different dosages that you can use. Um, doctors are very careful to monitor these. When I have a child in the classroom who is starting on medicine, um, I am in constant contact with the parent to see if there's any signs of uh, things the medicine isn't working or it's affecting him in a certain way or a certain side effect. So you were certainly very aware of that. Um, I kind of feel like with ADD, a true ADD child, it is something that is kind of like something physically that they need to, that they need to deal with. Um, just like as a child, if somebody who had uh, diabetic or with diabetes, right. they would need to have something that's going to help with that. Got this it. is the same thing with ADD. And of course, again, it is the parent's choice if they want to use some medicine or not to help their child. Sometimes a younger child, um, it's helpful until they mature enough and they grow enough and then they're able to use their own coping strategies and able to recognize um, where their strengths and weaknesses lie and, and how to use those strengths and weaknesses. You can also, again, many parents sometimes believe in nutrition certain dyes to, to avoid, certain caffeines to avoid that would set off or make the child more hyperactive, and then kind of tell what foods might set the child off, like within a number of minutes, what might affect him or not. Wow. And definitely you can take that into consideration as you're monitoring the diet and nutrition-wise. Um, there are different um, feedback methods where a child um, is taught breathing techniques, and if he's in a certain situation, what he can do to kind of um, have these biofeedbacks and control um, those impulses and how to handle some of those frustrations. Mm -hmm. Again, that is a kind of like a learned response and that helps as a child is getting older. So there are a lot of alternatives that are out there. That's fantastic. Lastly, um, I truly believe my husband has ADD. I believe it with all my heart. But once you get to a certain age, obviously, you know, you're not going to believe yourself. Um, what can an adult do, a mom do, a woman do to recognize ADD either in herself or in her partner? Mm -hmm. I'm going to say the same thing. Don't take the partner's um, ADD-ness personally. <laughs> there are, there, I believe there probably are a lot of adult men who have ADD who weren't diagnosed at a young age because the doctors were not aware of, of, all, of all of these things. Um, and certainly the, the moodiness sometimes or the forgetfulness or the impulsivity of certain things certainly fall onto that ADD. You're describing my husband to the T. And I think that they need, <laughs> sometimes I think um, a person, especially a child who has ADD, they really don't recognize that in themselves and that's where the learning part comes in. They have to learn how to cope and, and what those signs are. And I think that's the same thing for an adult. There's lots of literature out there and there's lots on the internet that can 
tell you that you can almost kind of look to see, do I have all these signs? And if I do, what do I need to do to help with this? Okay. Do I need to work on the impulsivity? Do I need to step back before I make decisions and think before I go buy that next gadget, do I really need it or what should I, what should I do? Um, and stop and think, you know, again, breathing techniques for, for adults that they can use before they, you know, have temper or, you know, or get angry at something. Um, and then patience. You know, also, if you realize that you really need to work on these things as an adult, you can monitor yourself and kind of take that into, into consideration. Great advice. And I, get th I say over and over again through this interview, I think it's advice that we can take in all of our lives, ADD or not. So thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing your insights. They've been invaluable.